come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Thank you. We come at you every Saturday, right here. Right where? <laughs> Wherever you found where us. Colin? There was some like new place that like sent us an email. It was like Pod Track. Or apparently we're on Pod Track. If you're listening to us on Pod Pod Track, thank you. (laughs) Wherever you found us, uh, please give us a star rating or a thumbs up or subscribe for sure, because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like minded folks like yourself. Do we have that many listeners where they're it's so varied on what they listen to us on? Like is that possible? I think is- so because I've gone through some of them and we have like ratings on stuff that like I'm like, "Oh, I should be checking this cuz <laughs> like, you know, I don't check uh what do you people listen Well, on? Android like- does not have one good no, app. True. There are yeah, several app options. App. But no, doesn't Google have Google Podcasts now? Yeah, but it sucks. Oh. And its selection is very limited. Sorry, so. But we're what? on oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I don't use it. I you use a third-party app. So. Well, I, use, I just use I, I just, use Castbox. Do you? Cast I just box. use Stitcher for everything. Stitcher works. Yeah, Stitcher's yeah. good. Mm-hmm. I got a good old iPhone. I just yeah. yep. <laughs> Apple Podcasts. Yeah. 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 yeah, or iTunes. I don't even know yeah. what you call it now. But if you are listening to us on one of these fantastic platforms, uh, please fantastic. hey, yeah, uh, give us a give us a rating there. So, uh, who are these internet radio superstars you're listening to? Holly, Michaela, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Sean. Sean. What Sean. we watch tonight? <laughs> uh, a 1997's I Know What You Did Last Summer. Oh, I Know What You Did Last Summer. Mm. Not to be confused mm. with I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. Mm. I Know or What all, You Did Last or, Halloween or whatever the... On or Friday the 13th. <laughs> yeah, on Friday the 13th. Is, or I'll Always Know What You Did I'll Last Summer. I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer. Right. We should never confuse this with I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer. <laughs> but okay. specifically, not to be confused with a 1960's movie called I Know What You Did. Oh. Anybody oh, seen shit. this? No, no. Nope. But I'm sure that's Haven't where Kevin it. Williamson got the uh, title for this. <laughs> Could be. But it's like Could these be. two teenage girls. They just they're prank calling people. And they call people up and go like, "I know what you did." And oh. they call this guy who just killed his wife. Oh. Well, I mean, yeah. the book was called. This is based off a book, loosely based off a book. Loosely, it sounds loosely. like a YA novel. It, Holy I mean, shit! It, that makes so much <laughs> sense that you say that is. now. I think it's uh, <laughs> written by Lois Duncan. Um, it was definitely a YA novel because I remember it being in the library when I was a little kid. I never read it, but I always knew it was there, and I always looked at it. That was the title, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it came Wait, from did the book. it have? I didn't see a, a based on the novel at the beginning of. The- she may have fought to get it taken off because the writer of that book hates this movie, and it's is it the same plot? It's a Cobra <sighs> Fair Game situation, not <laughs> particularly. It is. I think there's a couple elements that are the same. But other than that, it's uh, it varies differently. It's hmm. more of a it's more of a drama in the book, and I think it's more of a, uh, I think there is a death earlier on, and uh, I think a group of kids. But it it varies widely from that. Kind of want to read this book now. Not gonna lie, I I wouldn't mind picking it up and reading it. I'm sure it's. I think it's a quick read. Mm-hmm. But uh, a lot of it's definitely not a horror book. It's not a slasher book. It's not. Uh, it doesn't have those elements. In it. It's more of the mystery of like who, what happened to these. The story of um, Susie and David Egan, I think, is more prominent. Like that's the story of the book. Mm. But that's very much a hugely popular subgenre of YA books. Mm. Like you've got your Pretty Little Liars, Go Ask Alice. Like those are all like oh, yeah, murder yeah. mystery, but like like diet murder mystery in like yeah. a high school setting. Like that's a hugely successful subgenre of yeah, YA. it a is. Lot of those books, yeah, mm-hmm. from back then. That's the shit yeah, I, I read. Remember. Yeah, same. Not, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I well, this is so. This is primarily Kevin Williamson. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, who we would know that. from. Uh, Dawson's Creek. Dawson's Creek. We know the Vampire Scream. Diaries. Teaching there Mrs. we go. Teach, teaching Mrs. Tingle, which was originally uh, Killing Mrs. Tingle. Which was originally Killing Mrs. Tingle. Well, there wasn't that the thing. He like sold like three scripts like all at the same time. I thought there was like Scream, which was originally called Scary Movie, and then there was I Know What You Did Last Summer yeah. and Killing Mrs. Tingle. Mm-hmm. Yes, and all of those got produced. It seems to me like within 
the same like three years. Or yeah. And then yeah. he was yeah, like, yeah. because of Scream, he got the gig to write uh, what became Halloween H two O. Yeah. In the, the final, he just says story credit. But right. Because I think I read his draft at one point. Was that the one with the the helicopter decapitating Michael Myers? Because that's what I remember. I don't remember from his how it draft ended. of the script. Pretty sure that was part of it. Yeah. I think we might have done more Kevin Williamson movies on this podcast than anyone else's movies ever. Like. Well, I mean, it was, he he's done it. He's had his hand in everything. So I suppose been, you know it's he was. We forget cursed. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. When he teamed did, back up with did, uh, West Did he write the the whole series, or did he did he step away from Dawson at some point? I think he stopped being the primary like writer okay. and maybe would write specific episodes towards the okay. end. Yeah. Um, but I remember oh, you remember Downtown Crossing? Oh, fucking yeah, hell. That episode that ever- <laughs> turned everyone against Dawson's Creek. He had no writing in that one. You can tell because it doesn't feel like anything else in the Everyone just kind of bowed out yeah, after that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. But I think like I think for like the first three or four seasons he was the primary writer and then after that it dropped off a okay. lot. It's like yeah. Aaron Sorkin on West Wing. Yeah. 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 But he has like, I mean the guy did leave a significant impact I suppose on at yeah. least the 90s genre of uh, oh, horror yeah. films. Mm-hmm. Probably like the biggest horrible. impact on yeah, like, yeah. He have, it's Wes Craven and him like mm-hmm, and right? anything that came after that comes from like it's is, imitating is influ- this yeah. imitated influenced by them like, yeah they started the big boom and everything kind of came after that like this movie feels like an imitation of uh, Scream kind of yeah it does well, I mean, it does come from okay. the same writer so yeah that whole thing you got the, you got your young cast in there your your ingenues your up and coming stars who are starring Pick in it directly off of their hit television shows yep mm-hmm. party of five mm-hmm. yeah, yeah we got party of five <laughs> yep. right so for multiple times J Love Mm-hmm. Hewitt. J. Love. J. Love. <laughs> no, J. Love Hewitt. Oh, boy. J. Love Hewitt. J. Lo Hewitt. <laughs> J. Lo Hewitt. No, I specifically yeah. remember in the 90s, she would be like love. giving, yes, she would yes. be giving interviews and she'd be like, my friends call me love. Yeah, call me yeah, love. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> do you remember that? I remember you that. Do. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> she liked to be called love. She mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. And then I still say uh, that was a self-inflicted nickname. So it's sort of like oh, it, t- like Seinfeld so and T-Bone. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, yeah. No. She's like everyone calls me love, and nobody calls her that. Yeah, yeah. nobody yeah. calls her that. Yeah. No, not at all. No, because that's because there. I think there's uh, she's uh, credited on some movies with love in quotations. I bet some British oh, guy. Yeah? Was, yeah. Yeah. I, no. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Jesus. so. Yeah. I bet some British guy was like, "Hello, love." She's like, love. "It's my nickname." Yeah. Because I love everybody. Not knowing. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Given I'm, I love Jennifer Love Hewitt. I just want to point that out. Yeah, she's great. Oh as do I. Because I'm going to rip her to shreds. During this, but I actually yeah, love her. This, love is, her. Actually this is the love movie her. I fell in love with Jennifer Love Hewitt. I think she's yeah. great. Yeah, uh, but it's awesome. I was day. telling you why, while I was watching this, I like I don't think that I've seen her since this movie well, in the sequel, obviously, sure. but. Like Ghost Whisper and uh, uh, the, the client list. The client list. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I like Life Tattoo. That's just a bunch yeah, of episodes of her yeah. giving yeah. hand jobs to dudes. That's yeah. pretty much that show. Is it yeah. an HBO show? No. no. It's, it's like Lifetime. Lifetime. It was oh, Lifetime. Oh, no. Yeah. So she yeah. really yeah, has so fallen off. It's not off even good. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Wow. Nothing good happens. Not, yeah, it's very low it's budget. It's pretty hilarious. I was all about some Ghost Whisper on fucking CBS. Oof. I did like that show. I ate that shit up. Wait, did all of the party of five people have a horror movie? Lacey Shaber. 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 She had Black Christmas. Christmas. She did. Yeah. Was she also in like Sorority Row or something? No, maybe it was just Black Christmas. I think it was just Black Christmas. Did okay. Scott Wolf have anything? I don't think so. Scott Wolf is. I don't think just he did. Party Five. And yeah, yeah. I was gonna say they may played a creep in some other like and then, TV movie or something. And then married is, someone from the real world. Yeah. yeah. Well, Matthew Fox then is actually <laughs> the guy who's still working out of that crew. Well, I mean, yeah. they're all still working, but he's yeah. like in bigger movies. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He's still doing stuff. Right? I mean, he did Lost for forever. I was going to say, yeah, wasn't he like the main character? Yeah. Yeah. He did Uh Vantage Point. Mm -hmm. And what was that? uh, We Are the Titans? He did We Are... Well, no, he did Marshall. We Are Marshall. Marshall, yeah. Marshall. And it was Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans, right. He was We Are Marshall, and he was uh, the Alex Cross movie. Yeah. I think it was just called Alex Cross at that point with uh, Ty... He's kind of in World War Z. Yeah. He also had a very good small part in a movie you may have heard of. I'm trying to remember the fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one? Yeah, I it. watch it every weekend. Well, while you're while no, you're no, thinking no. of it, What's the, with Ryan Reynolds, the the uh, and all the assassins, um, <laughs> Smoking Aces. Oh, oh Smoking oh. Aces. He had yeah, a fucking great part in Smoking Aces. Yeah. If you haven't watched that in a while. Uh, worthy of a rewatch. And his little part is fucking awesome. 
I think my favorite's got to be Lacey Chabert and Mean Girls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> Lacey Chabert also did a very good Jennifer Love Hewitt impression in Not Another Teen Movie. Oh yeah, she's, there you go. She's specifically dressed like her, yeah. acts like her. It's mm. wonderful. She's yeah. also in. It's guys. It's on Netflix now. If you want to watch it, she's in a uh, Christian rom com called Christian Mingle. Oh, that is all yes. about is. the Christian Mingle dating yes, website. She yes. also did her yep. fair share of the the <laughs> Lifetime movies and yeah, the Christmas she's done a lot. shit and all that. But yeah. these people aren't in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> None of them are. Yes. All right, so Except we got we got we got J Love. <laughs> We've got uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer herself, Sarah Michelle Gellar, and this is we tracked it back. This is like the yes. second year of the show. Yep. Yes. So she's at like peak season uh, two. Mm-hmm. This is going into her peak stardom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then so she was recruited out of this like into the majors for Scream Two. Basically, it was like you did okay in the mm-hmm. Scream knockoffs, so and now we'll bring you into the right. actual uh, series itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And simply irresistible. Nah. <laughs> yeah. she was, wasn't she? Wasn't that? No, she that was like a magic. It was a magical magic. realism. Yeah. Right. She was a chef. It was. It right. was the American version of like water for chocolate, where yes. like her emotions get put into the food kind of thing. <laughs> but it was done horribly. Oh it's, god, it's, I remember all the and Sean that movie. Patrick Flannery is in that. I think too. Hmm. So. But she was yeah. also in the Grudge, the remake yeah. of the that's Grudge. Right, she was and in that. Yep, Cruel was Intentions. Cruel Intentions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. there's a couple other there. horror movies. Like she was a horror starlet at some point because she was in. Um, was it like the Returning or the Reckoning? Or no, that's Hillary, oh. uh, Hillary Swank, right? That's a uh, oh yeah. There's some the really reaping. The, 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 the Reaping. The Reaping. Yeah. So maybe yeah. it is yeah. like the Reckoning yeah. or something yeah. that Sarah Michelle maybe, Gellar was. That seems very. She was in Possession. Not the one Not we the, No, the that 2008 was Possession. Was that? No, uh, 2008 Possession. What did we watch? The one possession? with Jeffrey Dean No, that was Dean Possession, Morgan? but it was... Yeah. No. Yes. Lee, or Lee Pace and Michael Landa's... I don't, I don't, I don't know. Possession was the Exorcist spoof. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it's uh, different. 2008 Possession. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I remember that. Well... I don't remember that. No, I don't either. It's a it says it's a drama horror mystery, so who knows how much horror there is. Drama to it, horror you know? mystery. While they're really just like, we don't yeah. know what it is. We're just gonna. One of you will like it. Uh, yeah, somebody. <laughs> oh, I forgot she was the voice of April O'Neil in the TMNT movie. Oh right. She was, oh right. Yeah. Yeah. She oh she also did a lot of Scooby Doo. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. Oh, yeah. Her and Freddie yeah. Prince, her yes. husband, both yeah. did a lot of Scooby-Doo. And this is the movie right. they met on. It's very yeah. true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They're still together. Yeah, All right, so still together. help me I out, because I think when I first saw Not this, I'm mean, like, I knew, <laughs> I, you yeah, know, I'm, together. I don't remember Freddie Prince, like, senior's music or whatever, but I knew that he was oh, yeah. the, the son of him. Had he done any, like, TV or something before this? I think or why he was... did a TV show, but I don't remember what it was. Mm. Uh, uh, this was his launching pad also? I like, think so. I think so. There was no major major thing before this. This was the big one for him. I also think Ryan Felipe, this was his also his big yeah, one. Yeah, because I don't remember him being I don't remember anything Cruel Intentions was after show. this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wing Commander, you know, was after this. Oh, Wing Commander with Matthew Lillard. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh-huh. I remember that because it's just like, you're from this one and you're from this one and you're coming uh-huh. together in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> An awesome video. <laughs> that was my exact reaction movie. and then I never saw that movie. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like, not good. You're not missing anything. Oh, by, no, I by, can't imagine. It didn't right? look good. No, it did not look good. We're skipping Wing Commander. Oh, fucking uh, You so just it, unlocked a doorway into things <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so do we need to, before we get into this movie, also cover the director? Who was who? Not uh, Jim Gillespie. Not really, because he didn't do a whole lot, but I'll tell you what he did do. Uh, it was mostly TV before uh, a TV series called Cardiac Arrest. I don't know if you remember that one. Nope. Uh, I don't. <laughs> Oh, shooting gallery. Uh, something called the Ghostbusters of East Finchley. Nope. Nope. It's. Uh, I love that in uh, IMDb, it is a TV series that is described going from 1995 nothing. Still going on like right it's now? Still going Holy on. Holy cow. No, I don't think it's it is. It's a big is. thing in like, New Zealand. I don't Zealand. think it is. I they think just they don't just, know what it is. <laughs> right. They just, just, like, they it just it ignored it at yeah, this point. I think so. <laughs> Whoever was supposed to film that day just forgot. No yeah. one cares. No one cares. <laughs> but he did. I know what you did last summer. And then he did. Uh, after that, it was what five years before his next one, which is I See You with Stallone. Which was that released as it was? He, was it Detox? Released? Yeah. Which what was the title it was released under? Uh, I've seen the it. Poster says Detox, but okay. the IMDb credit is I See You. So I don't know. I well, I remember. It, so I don't know. Like, have you seen that movie? No. The dude no. in it, the killer, is like uh, the copy of the fisherman, except he's, it's in like the Arctic. So he's got like one of those uh, like furry, a, like McCready's coat yeah. from yeah. the thing. Yeah, it's the like thing from poster. Legend? Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I have to see this movie. Now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I really. It's got see like it. Robert Patrick, and there's a whole bunch of people in it. Yeah, it was damn. And it went like direct to video. Why can't I want to see that now? 
Uh, he also did in 2005 Venom, the voodoo movie. That was really bad. That if I was remember. bad from what I remember. Yeah, I only saw it once. I flushed it out of my head. Yeah, doesn't the guy remember. have like tattoos all over? Yeah, him or something, something like, yeah. like that. And yeah, yeah, it's forgettable. Don't go see that. Uh, and then after that, it was the Family Firm, which was a TV movie. He did. It's a TV movie, but it says episode director and mm. whatever. Uh, and Billionaire Ransom, which was the last thing he did in 2006, which is a nothing and nobody's in it. So not much. Like yeah. this is probably his biggest thing. Yeah. I Probably. feel like directors kind of take a backseat to Kevin Williamson, unless it's Wes Craven anyways. So. Well, how I much of this, you know, it's I like... I think if you directed a lot of music videos in the 90s, they were giving you directing jobs. Oh, for sure. But David Fincher. Well, sure, but I mean, <laughs> he, had, uh, he had a style that Well, then they did uh, short films like Jamie Blanks, who did uh, uh, Urban Legend yeah. after that. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of, like, the visual style looks like they're going for that clean, you know, the scream look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? I felt like this whole movie was out of focus. Like, yes, I felt like it was that. I was like, that could be the fact that <laughs> yeah. we just was watched a, a burned yeah. copy. Yeah. 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 A DVD burned copy that I did 12 years ago. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, think that's, all I think that's why. Because yeah. I, like I, I watched this like a week and a half ago, uh -huh. and it, it doesn't look like okay. that. <laughs> No. All right, but aside from Scream, I mean, this one, the, I know what you did last summer, is one of the uh, premier 90s slasher wave horror titles, which yes. I think, like, everyone who was around at that time saw this movie. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's very likely that you, listener, have seen this movie and are intimately familiar with it. I would think so. I'll guarantee anybody who's oh, yeah. listening to well, there's seen uh, this younger folks out there who maybe they haven't seen uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer yet. Maybe their parents haven't. <laughs> Is it, it worth see, talking to them? You're going to have to wait till the end of this show to find out if we recommend it, but we're going to we're going to walk you through this. So, um all right, so the, the setup of this movie is that you've got a group of kids that when they're out partying on a 4th of July night in the small fishing village of Southport, Southport, uh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yep. They irresponsibly hit some guy on the side of the road. And then instead of being responsible young adults that they should be and, uh, you know, calling the cops, they throw them into the, the ocean. What would you what would you guys have done? And in this situation, I mean, if it, it was us four who just knew. Oh my God, guy, if this was the four of us, holy uh, shit. Colin's driving. I'm the drunk okay. asshole okay, sitting so, outside so the Colin's car. Colin's sober. Colin's sober. Colin's I'm sober the driving. drunk one outside the car. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll take that role. Because, because who laughing, else? You're laughing too hard, Michaela. Because who else would it fucking be, Sean? <laughs> you're all. This, uh, this episode brought to you by water. Enjoy that, Holly. <laughs> yes, thank you. Ice Mountain. It's refreshing. Yeah. Uh, so I'll do that. Um, and so me and Holly are in the back. Seat. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, are we a couple? <laughs> I, well, how very progressive. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what, what it should be. That means yeah. you two are a couple too. Yeah. That's fine. I still right, know same. what you know that you did <laughs> last summer. Sean just brushed Colin's hair out of his face. We're a couple. Oh. <laughs> that's what couples do. They fix each you. other's hair. Oh, I mean, God. uh, listening. Oh, I think you call the cops. I think that's the responsible like thing that you do, right? right. But they're like, saying, like, the your wrinkle. lives could be ruined if we... The wrinkle actually... is there's a whole bottle of liquor spilled on the inside of your car. Mm -hmm. I would take That's the, the problem. Is that open container is already its own problem. And then right. on top of that, like, you've got one guy that's wasted. So they're going to probably make you all blow your alcohol limit. Probably. Everyone else should be fine at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Barry's the one. And he says, like, even Freddie Prince Jr. is like, they'll never believe I was driving. I'm just like, I'll take that chance. Yeah. I, mean, I would take that but chance. But as we see later in this movie, the cops in this town don't give a fuck about anything. Like, yeah. That's because so, nothing happens. So they're like, eh, what are the odds? No, but Something that cop is an happening. asshole. Well, that's what I'm saying. You're lucky we get the asshole but cop. You everybody's know? an asshole in this movie, yeah. aren't they? Except yeah, maybe Anne Hayes, who shows up as a simpleton, who, you know, apparently, yeah. like, uh, crazy. is the. She's the. Mm -hmm. Is that what they're going for? She's crazy. They're the town, like, Texas Chainsaw family. Well, she keeps to herself and she does her own thing and she. Cuts up fish and the she's the sister of the guy. Yeah, guts who, uh, in her the guy we see at the beginning of the movie, David Egan, who's sitting on a cliff, apparently drunk. We don't see him drinking, but yes, he, looks, you do. he has a bottle. Very, he's, he's drinking. Oh, he? He's oh. drinking a beer. He's okay. despondent. Yep. Yeah, very much so, and flipping his little ding. Thing. <laughs> he's flinging his thing. Oh wow! It's a charm, <laughs> listener. It's some yeah, kind yeah, of no, it's necklace. Some sort of charm on a chain. Good grief! Where it's a where what your was, mind went. There should be a name for those. Yeah, I'm sure I don't there know is, what that is. Where you just flip it and it spins, but it's all, you know. Yeah. Yeah. One of those things. We've all played with is. those. But he's there, and and uh, uh, he's there. He's there. Drinking. Drinking. 
yeah. sadly pining for his mm-hmm. long lost love that he mm-hmm. lost the, the year before. Mm-hmm. What a weird opening to this movie! Like that's just like I mean, just I, like here's a guy you don't know anything about. So remember this. I mean, I'm I'm okay with that. When <laughs> I'm okay with it too. Actually, of, yeah. it's just something that you can figure out later. It's just like mm-hmm. you got to start putting pieces together. Yeah, to I kind of like that. As- doing, I kind of so like fine. that aspect of it's this not, movie. I'm not being spoon fed. Yeah. They're not telling me like when they this actually is this guy. they hit the guy and they they can't see who it is because his face is all bloodied or yeah. whatever. Right. Purposely, I guess yes. I guess from like a '90s teen movie, I expect the opening scene for them to be like driving down the highway, top down, listening to music, telling about what they're going to do for the summer, and that's like the setup for like this is the summer off of from school. Yeah. And like that's kind of how I expect. This is like one year before where they're talking about what they're going to do with the rest of their lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As I was saying, because we do get that in the following scene Mm -hmm. after the firework transition to them at the party, we do get that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, just out of curiosity: Would this movie have played better or worse? Because you know, as we were sitting there tonight, I was like, man, this is like I don't know, twenty minutes of setup. It feels like where they're talking about, like, this is who you are, this is who I am. It feels like a long time. And then they hit the guy, throw him into the ocean, and then it's one year later, right? And Mm -hmm. then they start getting the, I know what you did last summer letters. Yeah. Is it too slow for modern audiences? Would it have played better as a flashback? Like the, you start now, and then you have to discover through the, as the course of the movie goes what you actually did last night. What they that did that would have been really cool, actually, to kind of like peel back the layers and like like especially if you kind of go from the angle that they all have like this PTSD that they're dealing with, right? And you don't know what the trauma is, and then mm-hmm. you work backwards so, to reveal the okay. trauma. Yeah. That would so, be awesome. It so could maybe work. So maybe you would open on Jennifer Love Hewitt at college and getting ready to go back home. Not and, yeah, it's and not a you, happy person. Yeah, and you go back. And and you get starting letter. flashbacks of her being happy with her best friend and that right. kind of thing. And then, and then maybe, maybe we go back and do an extended thing. I, I like the setup that they do in this movie because, you know, we get happy people at the beginning and, you know, where they're, where they're at in their lives and how, I suppose, yeah. the way it's set up, the event happens and the one year later gives us, like, a reintroduction to all the characters and how they've been affected mm-hmm. from having mm-hmm. yeah. done this thing. And I like the way that goes. Yeah. Again, like I said, you could do it the other way. Yeah. But... I'm, I have no problem with the way they do it. It does lead to, it is a longer, it's a longer walk to get to where they're trying to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's because I think like you're saying, it's that if you, if you sit with them for long enough and you get to know who they are yeah. and the promise of what their lives are going to be, right. which all sounds douchey as all hell. <laughs> yeah. So it's like. Yes, that's the best word for it. It really is. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Right. They all sound like, yeah. uh, you know, vapid. You know, she's going to, Jay Love's going to go. She'll be an actress. To, she'll be a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to go off to. They're sitting uh, in cafes and drink coffee. Yeah. 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 And sure, work yeah. on their and, laptops. That was, and that was the 90s. <laughs> that was like a novelty to be able to do that. Like, you'd be right. a rich kid to do, you know, go to an internet cafe and, mm-hmm. you know. Dear Lord. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's, because uh, this is it's drawing off of movies like, because I know Kevin Williamson, obviously, you know, going into it. You know, this is a movie from the guy who did Scream. The guy who knows Scream, like, knows horror movies and dissected them, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be, like, another dissection of the genre. At least this was the expectation, I think, sure. like, that you I, had at, in 1997 going into the movie. They advertised it that way. This is a different, um, uh, I think this was Columbia or Paramount? One or the other. Or um, Columbia, and, I believe. Sony. Columbia. And, so, well, they advertised from the creators of Scream mm-hmm. and the trailers and all that stuff, and they got sued yeah. for it. That they that they couldn't do that. I think uh, Dimension and the Weinstein sued them. Said like you, uh, you can't do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, do you get that? I mean, you know, because we're saying it's a it's it's like a clone of Scream, but is it? You know, it's like in this genre I mean, that Scream started. It's very Screamish. But I get a lot of um, my bloody Valentine out of it. Yeah, especially because it's yeah. like a small fishing town. And I get like, a lot of my bloody Valentine. It's all it. centered around the community events. You know. Right. Yeah. And yeah. It also feels like. In the uh, in the town, in the atmosphere that they've built up, I, the how my bloody Valentine had like the mines and all that stuff. Exactly, kind of this, this, is this is a fishing, is the town. fishing town. Yeah, exactly. And like the back areas where the characters all end up, especially mm-hmm. like Sarah Michelle Gellar and everything. Like, I it feels like their version of that. Like exactly. the mines they go down in, the instead docks of, they work in. Yeah, instead stuff. of like the town dance, it's the town Fourth of July festival. It's the like, croaker it's very, queen thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Behind the scenes through all the docks yep. and stuff. Like yeah. I get that feeling like big time it does yeah. feel more like that than scream I th- yeah i think so for sure I, I it's all i could think of watching yeah. this i was like yeah kind of scream but definitely more valentine right, more mm. of those i would agree or the uh whatever the uh the location becomes like a part of the i think the it does atmosphere
atmosphere of the. I think it does very film. much in this yeah. movie. I like it. Well, it's also uh, prom night comes to mind, and um, Terror yeah. Train are two movies that. Uh, well, prom night starts with like an event that a group of people right. are a part of. I believe Terror Train. I can't remember if it's a flashback in that one, but like they all fucked somebody up, and now they took a had a pact, and like we're never going to talk about it again. And you know now somebody's killing them. Is it that guy? We thought we killed him. I mean, like that is the you know those right. two movies. Yes, yeah. That's the uh, the plot, the engine. You know, right? Yeah. Of so many movies. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a, an updating of the slasher to like 1997. What is the the so if you're making a distinction, of what separates 90 slasher movies from like 80 slasher movies? The music. <laughs> okay. The okay. music and the stars. <laughs> Definitely yeah. the music. Obviously the stars. I think they I think the stars are more prominent. Outside of these movies, like being brought in, the, mm-hmm. the right. 80s stars. Ever I think were. the stars are more important than almost anything else in this. Yeah, movie. probably. Which that's is that's, the, that's a big attraction well, to the yeah. movie. Which that is something thing, very 80s. much. Which is something very much. Scream. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, right. very yeah. Oh, much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Because Scream did it so well. Yes. And everything had to do because all the posters. Like, this is gold. Like, damn it, we're gonna yeah. do this every time. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Dawson from Dawson's Creek in our movie, and there he's his head giant on the poster. Yeah. That's yeah, wow, Scream one. really started that thing of, like, here's your collage of everyone mm-hmm. in this yeah. movie. Yeah, the head Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. I love but, the poster for this movie, too. It's yeah, a, I mean, it's, it's a good poster. It is a good I, I poster. Because like, it, it is your, 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 you know, the heads of all your stars, but it's yeah. got that, like, red outline of mm-hmm. the slicker and the hook in the very corner. Yeah. I've always mm-hmm. loved that poster for this. Mm-hmm. If you're yeah. going to bury something, make sure it stays buried. <sighs> mm-hmm. Love it. <laughs> love it. It's a good tagline. It is a good and tagline. it's also good life advice. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me ask you this about the slashers themselves in these movies. Or maybe we should talk about this specific movie, but it seems the like... Man. Well, I mean, the Hook Man. The Hook Man. The talk. Yeah. A slasher villain, right, has mm-hmm. to have some kind of defining characteristics, which yeah. is usually sure. what? Like, to be uh, memorable, uh, at least. A hook. Well, so they got a specialized <laughs> weapon. There? A weapon and a, and and a, a disguise. It's a weapon yeah. and a costume. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. This feels not to, uh, and I don't want to say this to the detriment of this movie, this feels like the uh, B team. This feels like the. the <laughs> it's the, cheap. It feels like the B team. Of if we're going if we looked at a list versions of this you know his ghost face right what are you yeah. saying from this era or of I think, all time I think of all time if you compare it to all time it's definitely B team well yeah yeah for sure obviously at best yeah yeah but I'll give it, it might B-team. be uh, because it I'll give it B team yeah. because it um I think this movie did well when it came out it got a sequel with the main character it was hugely back. successful yeah. right yeah. so I think that gives it B because there's a lot of them that got the first one and maybe continue on with. Nobody in the second one, but continued like costume and and mm-hmm. uh, weapon and all that stuff. But this one did well. Had the characters come back for the second one. Had the killer come back for the second one. So I think it. I think it's deserving of B team status in those regards. Mm-hmm. But what uh, I mean of the nineties, I'm like I'm trying to think like mm-hmm. you know Ghostface. Obviously, that one was like you sure. know that's lightning striking. Yeah. What is it? The third time for Wes Craven in his career. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know that's a. A decent, sl- you know, like he sits with the pantheon of the classic slashers. Yeah, I think. yeah, one of my yeah, favorites. He's got it, yeah. One of my favorites. Which one? I think it was. Uh, oh shit, we watched Urban Legend. I can't remember. The fencing mask was Urban Part Legend two. two. Yep. What was Urban Legend one? It was the coat. It was just the yeah. it the was coat just the big winter coat. Oh, the big, big winter, winter coat. coat. Yeah. Right. I can't see the face. The thing coat again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was the yeah. Coat. Yeah. 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 coat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Valentine had the uh, Cupid mask, yeah. which almost gets repeated in uh, Happy Death Day. Right, it's kind of yeah. similar. Little baby, ma- yeah. Happy yeah. Death Day is a pretty good one. That's yeah. a pretty good one. Modern if vintage, yeah. Modern. If you haven't watched Happy Death Day, you should. You probably should probably go see yeah. that. That's probably well, the best now, so. slasher movie <laughs> yeah. of like since I think so. My Bloody Valentine 3D. No, I don't know. Oh, There's boy. probably another. I one mean, there. hey, um, the argument could be made, but it's. <laughs> I can't fun. think of one. I know. It's entertaining. Uh, it's good. Yeah. Like it fits. It fits in with this stuff. But you know, I think it does. It's a there's a plus to it. Like if nothing else, the uh, the main actress who's in that movie, like she, you know, she does something more than I think other actresses in those situations would do. Um, have you guys seen it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. She I, lo- she I love she's, it. She's good actress. Like she pulls that movie off. So mm-hmm. she's a major plus for that movie. Mm-hmm. Go see. it. Have you guys seen what the Scream TV series mask looks like? Yeah. It's bad. We talked about it. The blowjob mask. Yeah, it's yeah. it's real bad. Yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you, Sean, yeah, well, for like demonstrating. The, uh, it's Sean cross, made the face. They cross <laughs> the, uh, James mask. Yeah. the ghost face with like the hockey of the Jason hockey mask. <laughs> it straps on yeah. the back yeah, of the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bad. We'll have to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. The color is wrong, too. Yeah, it's all. It's, yeah. This, and there's, I think, the slight variations between first and second season. Yeah. We'll talk about it more when they bring the third season back with the original ghost face mask. There you mm-hmm. go. So the other component, I guess, of like the classic slasher films is the uh, makeup effects, which launched like Tom Savage and those type of uh, folks into these graphic gory murders that mm-hmm. m- enraged the MPAA and made them want to you know banish all these movies to yeah. the oblivion. Mm-hmm. So in the 90s they took a different tactic for doing these. Yeah, they did. Just- less is more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, uh, is it more? I that, think that was, less is less. That, less that was their more. philosophy. Less yeah. is more. That's what they wanted to get across. Like less is more, but maybe less equals less in some of these movies. Well, my it co- might in this movie a little bit. Did somebody go like, you know, I really love those '80s slasher movies. The only thing I really can't get past is the slashing. So maybe, oh boy, if yeah. uh, maybe the you plots. Want those people making your movies. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. So the plots are awesome, and that's why you got like a twenty minute intro where you have to meet all your people. <laughs> the plots, are, nobody ever said the plots are awesome in these ninety slash. <laughs> Apparently, movies. Kevin Williamson did because yeah. he made well, like yeah. <laughs> he made a shit ton of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, all of those, right? I mean, well, okay. So the question is: it is this movie a slasher movie? Barely. Why? Yes, I um, think it is. I mean, there's someone like a figure stalking these people and killing them individually. Yeah. Does he? But know? Well, I mean, like, I guess. Ba- like I said, barely. Yes, he does. Eventually, eventually. Yeah. eventually. Yeah. The, the, the tagline for this: eventually you'll die. Yeah. <laughs> eventually, yeah. the tagline yeah. eventually he'll get them. It might be a couple years, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. It takes him a little yeah. while, but he gets there. So is, his mo, the killer. We're mm-hmm. going to give some spoilers here. Should we warn people? Spoilers. They know. No. They know. This they is know. a 21 year old movie. There's some 21 year old kid who still hasn't seen it. He was listening to this show. So you got to stop the show. Go watch it. Come back. I want you to write <laughs> in. <laughs> um, so the killer, it turns out, is not, you know, the kid that they ran over at the. Because mm-hmm. the, they didn't run a kid over. They didn't run a kid over, yeah. Yeah. It is the guy they ran over. Yeah. And he, he's the. Okay, so like, so his girl, this kid, the suicidal kid that we're introduced to, was <laughs> running off where, with this, this is, guy's daughter. This is where the complication kind of comes in, I guess, because it is something you have to figure out along with your characters, or they're, they're yeah. giving you information as it goes along, and it's not as apparent as what you think it is off the bat. Mm-hmm. And it is information that's delivered in the third act. That you're just like, wait, what? The so twist. Wait, yeah. yeah. This is where Kevin Williamson's outsmart, or outthinking you, right? Because you as the audience are like, well, either it was a witness, somebody who has something against these deplorable people. Sure. And is using this as an excuse to pick them off. Or, 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 it's or. the guy that they hit. Mm-hmm. Who's come back? Yeah. You know, because who he, we've seen is alive. Grabs a tiara, opens his eyes underwater. Like, could it be him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. Because I mean, you can survive <laughs> all that. Most likely. Uh, so I mean, that's where you're thinking, right? It's like, who else can it be? Or it's one of them. It's Max. Right. It's Ray. Yeah. Right. But no, it turns out that no, it's a it's completely guy different guy that was like, like. Like not even like you hit my my son and so I'm after you. Mm-hmm. It's like you hit the guy, or no, you hit me after I had killed the guy who the killed guy my who daughter killed the year guy. before. <laughs> like what? It's so fu- it's, it's it is it is many it is many last summers in yeah. this movie. Yeah. <laughs> it is, is what it is. One summer Susie dies. The next summer, uh, the our character Ben Willis kills. David Egan, but then also gets killed. Yeah. Cool. I feel like I need to make like a timeline infographic for this <laughs> movie. Sh- I mean, kind of there should be. It, and then <laughs> it gets more complicated when you get to the sequel because you're yep. just looking at family trees at that point. <laughs> and stupid. Well, and things. it gets complicated because they win a trip to uh, Brazil. Bay? No, they win a trip to Tower Bay Island. I don't think it's in Brazil. Okay. Oh, the question, the trivia question is about Brazil is, is what, what is it is. What is the capital yeah. of Brazil? Yeah. Brasilia. Yeah. But and they say Rio. Yeah, they say the wrong answer in that movie, they would, but they still win. They uh, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that stupid. Wait, was yeah. the sequel was that wasn't written by Kevin Williamson? No. I don't think so, but <laughs> yeah, no, but it had no, Jeffrey no. Combs from Reanimator. That's all did. It did. Had him, which in a major film. I mean, that's all. Is that in the Frighteners? Right, that's like, right. You know. right? <laughs> that's it. Frighteners. I still know what you did last summer. <laughs> uh-huh. Career over. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> would you rather? Would you rather? <laughs> would right. you rather? Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't yeah. consider that a major film. 
Okay. <laughs> all right so this killer wanders around in his rain slicker like uh, because everybody you're in a fishing town everybody's wearing yeah. these things well, sure. yeah. you gotta blend in you can't be you know, easily identified otherwise they'll catch you walking you can't be like urban legend being a, wearing a fucking winter coat no matter what the weather is right, right. in <laughs> the pool yeah room. right yeah. his defense Okay, you said the pool room. I can't defend that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was the one that he stood out. It's it, like he only does it at night. But then you mentioned that. Yeah. It's like I, 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 I know that. we but pointed not, all that shit but out that's when not we the watched killer it in that scene. Right. Yeah. Why anybody would wear that coat in that scene? I don't know. Well, this guy chooses to use a hook. Now, yeah. now the reason that Probably. I'm curious about like him using it, you go like, well, it's because he's a fisherman. They have access to the things. But there is a lengthy scene on the beach. Uh, at the beginning in the in the mm, prologue, true, where the group sits around a campfire telling the old story of the hook handed killer sure. right. to Maybe each other. One of the most famous urban legends. Mm-hmm. What's the point yeah. of that scene? To set up the whole hook thing. Yeah, literally, that's. <laughs> I, I mean, I to, I guess to me, I thought like, oh, they have this like awareness of this urban legend, so they're going to use that to figure it out. But yeah. that's not what happens. Right. Because yeah. so this is, I guess, <laughs> when my first pass of this movie was Kevin Williamson did this deconstruction of the horror movie. And then like, you know, 10 minutes into it, he's giving you like urban legends. So this yeah. is going to be a movie about like, you know, some type of urban legend i th- i honestly i think they were setting it up to make it look like freddie prince jr was the killer because he's the one that's very avid like this is a real story this happened and then later on they set it up trying to make it look like he was responsible it's very true they mm-hmm. do keep yeah. coming back they to ca- keep coming back to him i think that's multiple the point. times yeah yeah mm-hmm. and then so they are just setting it up you think i so think so basically yeah. say the killer in our movie will have a hook this is going to be the hook handed killer movie yeah right. mm-hmm. and they really yeah. do like at least three Specific points that keep coming back to Freddie Prince Jr. as like mm-hmm. being pointed at as the killer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like this. Well, you got to have your well, yeah. Ryan you know, Felipe well, says, and all you got was a fucking letter. Like he, he's he's so angry in <laughs> yeah. this movie. Twenty four seven. He is. Over. Julie got a body in her <laughs> yeah. car, and you got a fucking you got her hair chopped off, off, and you got a letter. Yeah. Yeah. That's balanced. <laughs> yeah. That I, I, that's a, that was also that a trailer scene moment, cracked which, me up. Yeah. <laughs> which is funny. I remember it? all the trailer moments from these. Oh yeah. Was that that was a trailer moment? Oh yeah. I remember all that, but I do remember the. Whatever the uh, what are you waiting are you for? Waiting? So Everyone hard. remembers that That's because like, they got parody. Yeah, like, like I, I said during the movie, like every scene in this movie, I remember its counterpart in Scary Movie because mm. they mm-hmm. this is one of the ones they ripped off a lot. To do oh that. yeah, mm-hmm. and Scary Movie too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's like one of the iconic moments of the nineteen really ninety slasher it movies. Is. Yeah. It is. What are you waiting for? Mm-hmm. That what? was like the big moment in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! She spins around. Oh yeah! Mm-hmm. Even yeah. though it doesn't really amount to anything in this it's, movie, no, it doesn't, it doesn't mean like, anything. <laughs> it's funny that they yeah. pick these moments. To... Yeah, because then they like pan out with a crane shot, and she's just like kind of huddled, like she's crying. It's like, and then they it. go back to talking. Right. Like, they it, go it, back it, to talking right. after she says that, like nothing happened. In it's... the original movies, it doesn't end up being like a big moment, but it's like. These it's people like keyed made it. in on something. But is it yeah. because it's ridiculous? Or I, th- I mean, it's a moment Because like, it's the only over-the-top moment of yeah, the movie. Maybe it that's it, right? Out of that, yeah. yeah, it is over-the-top for this movie. And it's because her shoulders are all hiked back and you can see her boobs really well. Yeah. For most of the end of this movie. Yeah. That's where I was like... Again, you know, I fell in love with you, love <laughs> yeah. you in this movie. Yeah, I was I seeing it. her like in that shirt. I'm like, oh, this is the shirt she wears in that moment. Yep. Right? Yeah, because yep. that's what yeah. you remember. No, she looks cute. That's right, Yep. Is that a set? Yep. Yeah. It's a sweater they set. Sell, that was, that it was comes a in thing. a set. Yeah. Oh boy. That was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had a yeah. yellow one. Yeah, I yep. had a couple of them. <laughs> it was called Sunshine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was great. So many. So this movie has the '90s stank, is what oh, you're saying? Yeah, right? oh, the so '90s hair. Yeah, definitely. Beautiful '90s odor. <laughs> Not as much as some other movies we've watched, but sure. still oh, enough. Enough. Sure. It has a there, really effective. There are some things where it's just it's egregious how '90s they are. Yeah. I don't think this one is. You mean the Diet Coke commercial in the middle of this movie the, that we all literally I mean, said, yeah, that, that "I want a Diet Coke I, right I, now." That may be more <laughs> us than this movie yeah. because. Uh, there's you some... love Diet Coke. You just want caffeine. Yeah, but so, there's like you know. a, there is a <laughs> lot true. of close ups on that can. Like there is a slow. There's a whole shot close up on her there hands. Be, I thought it was a close up on her belly button. No. Uh, I don't know. Other, other All I know is you. Yeah, you, yeah I was saying, you're uh, mentioning the wrong things. Yeah. All I know is that that can looked frosty, and my mouth was watering. Yeah, no, she, <laughs> they close up on her while she pours it into a glass, and then sets it down, and they're still hanging. Well, she out. That was, was oh, hmm, yeah, diet coke. Yeah, <laughs> refreshing. 
And then yeah. winked and then had that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on over. Yeah. And then you hear the ding from the, yeah. the right. little coin thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there's at least one good kill like midway through the movie. Actually, isn't the best kill is it in the, the movie? Only kill the movie? Mm-hmm. Well, it's a brutal murder that, you know, you're like, Jesus, that, you know, just the intent, the intensity of the physical, the, you know, the smacks. Yeah. The kinetic action of it. Which one? Uh, Johnny Galecki. There it is. Yeah, okay. Johnny Galecki. Mm-hmm. Johnny Galecki's in this movie, and he dies. Playing the same role he's in. Because if he didn't, plays yeah, we would go 45 minutes without a death in this movie. Yeah. Being a slasher yeah. movie. Right. That's why I'm still this coming a, back to this. This, this is, is a, a reshoot reshoots. movie. This was a reshoots. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was. This was a reshoots death. This was, was the, like, hey, there's nothing hey, happening in your slasher nothing's movie. Nothing's happening. We need to kill someone. Just mm-hmm. at random. It, we need yeah. to kill somebody. Yeah. Because that's what I don't understand the slasher. Why do we kill him? I don't understand his motivation because he's, he's a witness. Galecki? He did drive that's, up on that's the, the only thing yeah. I can think he of. He drove up on the scene and right. saw and the, the and whole thing. And Ben Willis so, doesn't know if he saw anything. Yeah. yeah. So what if he did? I don't get like why your murderous rage is fueled for like all the he people. Hates kids. <laughs> you didn't. You drove by and you didn't help me. Yeah. Fuck you. You get yeah. a hook in the mouth. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, he wants. That's the to, best explanation you're gonna get. He uh, wants to el- eliminate the whole class of '97 from this town. Apparently so, yeah. and one He's random police there. officer. Yeah. Yep. Because the cop, you know, at some point the killer always kills, you know, at least somebody who can, the authority figure who can help you. That out. eliminates your safety, cop. Yep. If you kill the cop, but that cop was already an asshole, so you didn't even need to do that. That's what. Yeah. That, it's two layers of the cop was taking her to her house where you could go after her. That's what slashers do. Yeah. They go after you. Once but you, get you don't house. want him coming back later. I mean that. A, that's that a, cop that's was a, not going to because he did not give no. a fuck. Well, sure. I'm just, cop, saying it, I'm just saying it's an element where you get rid of, like, the, I guess, w- the one authority figure in a movie. Like, you see it through this. You see it in, like, Scream 2. Well, you, you always yeah. get rid of the cop. Yeah, the cop shows the cop. up. You kill the cop. It's yeah. like, oh, God, they you finally showed up to help us. If you kill the police officer. Yep. It's like, well, they're gone now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, mm-hmm. like, this, the, the first time we see a cop in this movie is the third act, and that cop does not give a fuck. So, like, there might as well not even be cops in this movie. So it's, it's I don't it's, even uh, get that murder scene where mm-hmm. Ryan Felipe? Philippi. Philippi that's buys awesome. it. Yep. Yeah. Are we sure? Yep. Because that's yeah. what I said for many years. Philippi. Philippi. Yeah. I thought it was Felipe in the last like three years. Nah, no, like, he ain't French. Phil- okay, Philippi. Well, always been like, my I was always yeah. Philippi. Yeah. I was all, all right. So Ryan, yeah. we're gonna go with Ryan. Ryan, right. Ryan. Ryan Witherspoon. He, yeah, so, <laughs> Mister yeah. Mister Witherspoon. Mr. Witherspoon. Yeah. Well, he's on a balcony, right, in a room that's packed with people. It's a theater, right, where they're watching him, the yes. uh, the Miss. Southport Croker. Festival, it's the Croker of, Queen, and uh, and he's getting killed up uh, up in the uh, balcony by the uh, the fisherman. Sarah Michelle Gellar's down there going like he's killing him up there. The entire crowd rushes to stop her from being hysterical. I don't understand, I don't understand, I don't understand that. that scene. Someone is yelling help and rushing, and you grab them and, and stop the them. It's just like no way, what? stop! You're hysterical. Yeah, because I what? think the natural reaction of people is like if you're pointing and you're like he's killing him. I think you, everybody turns looks. and yeah, looks, yeah, but not in this looks. movie. No, <laughs> you see someone. Like, you see someone barreling toward you, screaming. You're gonna move the fuck out of the way. You're or, not gonna yeah, stop I wouldn't them. Yeah, I would even get up. I'd be like. What's going on? Yeah. yeah. But no, they rush yeah. her to like contain they this crazy woman. They yeah. literally rush her. Contain the hysterical woman. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus That's Christ. Why, uh, some dude didn't slap her like. Psh. Yeah, seriously. Calm down. Well, I get seriously. for the plot Pull while they do together, this. yourself together, woman. <laughs> Jesus, she's hysterical. It's time to get her a wet rag. <laughs> for the plot, they do this because <laughs> totally if, everybody, <laughs> if everybody turned around, they'd see the fisherman like walking calmly down yeah. the stairs after having killed this dude in his fisherman gear. Yeah. yeah. Because there are two stairs that yeah. lead up to the balcony, yeah. which apparently empty into the fucking auditorium that everybody's in. Yes. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. It yeah. has to be the ending of every. You know, whatever. Colin, we'll get into the geography of like the buildings uh, in the this ge- movie because they make no book, sense. I'm gonna write a book called the Geography of Horror Movies. Yeah. The and it's, fucking it's, labyrinth it's, of this small town oh, is boy. unbelievable. Yeah. Especially I like the it boat. In certain things. Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff in there, but <laughs> the boat at the end is. In every, I, I cannot make every tails building of that and boat. boat and vessel has count has just unending hallways and it's got to. multiple There's always rooms. Be that chance to get away. And so many hall in the store. It's time that building Lord where her where her store yeah. was. Yeah. Whenever well, so they many, have to move a lot of so many. It's two floors and they got to move a lot of 
uh, product. So they have sure. a dumb the waiter. The yeah. storage, a they have a fucking dumb waiter. giant dumb waiter. <laughs> giant oh my dumb waiter from the top I, to the bottom. That blew my fucking mind. I was like, first of all, this is an unnecessary piece of technology that you have in your storefront. Have it's I, old. Everything have, in the I was going to say, but old. if it's a really old building, really that actually building. I buy. It's a really old town. Um, they don't have a freight elevator. They've got the dumb waiter. You have to If you are desperate to escape someone who's going to murder you, you're going to take the slowest form of transportation possibly. Oh no, I think her use of it is bullshit. Yeah. That's all she's got. Yeah. Well, listen, makes because good he walks, he, hooks going by he yep. walks That's up the stairs moment. faster yeah. than she can pull yeah. herself up. Yeah, yeah, it, okay. it's all she's got. <laughs> but let me, let me, because we were trying to figure this out during the actual movie. So the, the this scene, this with Sarah Michelle Geller, uh, is set up so she's running to the store where her sister works, right? Uh, so bitch she's sister. So there's the Halloween, the oh, long I label her that, but gosh, she's her a fucking bitch, bitch sister. I guarantee you, she was credited as bitch sister. She might be bitch sister. <laughs> You're talking yeah. about Mrs. Sampras? Yeah, oh yeah, Bridget Wilson yeah. Sampras. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, no. uh, so she. So well, there's the the kind of the Halloween long. Uh, walk right or the run across the street and like She's banging running, on the door. Walking. You gotta this let me in. My, um, like the killers are confident. Oh yeah, they'll, yeah. That they'll eventually catch up yeah. with these people. Yeah, because they just walk, they right? Just walk. But according to uh, behind the mask, legend of uh, Leslie Vernon, they have to do a bunch of cardio so they can run. And then when you turn around, then they start walking. <laughs> when the camera's on them, yeah. They then they're walking. Then in between, they're hustling because yeah. she gets to the door, big glass front. And her sister is like, there's no one out there. It's a glass front. Where did the fucking guy go? Mm -hmm. Apparently, he hightailed it around the back of the store and snuck in the back door. He was still, (laughs) she should see him because he's in the fucking street almost to the curb. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's when he started running. Well, but he gets to the curb. Like, she should see him. He's, yeah. He's, he's uh, like, crazy fast. Okay. He's like, what the? Like, the roadrunner. And away he goes. <laughs> Splits off. Runs around the building. All the way to the back. He's like... <laughs> This is before these girls God inside falls on can his... go back to the, and lock the door, right? At the back. Yeah. He's already in the building. Of course. And where does he go? Under plastic. Oh, wait, no, no. He does. He kills uh, Bridget Wilson first. Elsa, yes. yeah. Yep. He gives her the Bye, hook. bitch. Ilsa, yeah. Yeah. Bye, bitch. Die, bitch. Bye, bitch. bitch. <laughs> then he goes and he hides under plastic. Now, somehow, while he is under plastic, this man is able to do two amazing feats. Yes. I forgot what the first one was. Turn the music Turn off. The music Turns off. the music off. Number one. Then flips the lights. Turns the lights off. Yeah. There's no explanation for that. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, ju- I'm just going to put this out there. Old building. Wiring could be weird. Maybe there's wires nearby and he cut them. Okay. I don't know. Uh, it's not that's under the wire. That's yeah. under the plastic. And then going to hit a light switch and then running under plastic. <laughs> yeah. From under the plastic. Because this is the I alternate thing, right? Yeah. I think Sean's is, is actually what could have actually happened. I think so, yeah. He's yeah, under the plastic running around flipping shit off. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> even better. So he yeah. has the plastic yeah. sheet yeah. on. Yeah. I cut to him and he was like, <laughs> under the plastic. <laughs> not moving. He's freezing. Right. Like a mime. It's freeze tag, basically. Yeah. Right, you know? Because like, I was thinking, like, could he run and, like, take down one of the mannequins and get up under there and stand there before she gets. No, it's no like, because no. the sound. Yeah. Just the yeah. sound. Yeah. It's, it's great for a moment of, like, looking around and seeing something that's abnormal under plastic and then it jumps at you. That's a, that's a good moment. But the logic behind getting to that point. Does not hold up. And you know, it could have been so easily fixed by just saying, just say there's a storm. Mm-hmm. Make it there's a storm in town and the power goes out. Yeah. There that's you what go. they need it. Right. Every you know? horror movie, there's no storm in this movie. But there are fireworks that kind of have a flickering. They're but, a coastal right. town. It's yeah. so easy to write in a storm. Right. You live on the, the fucking storm. beach. Yeah, but it's a budget, con- <laughs> yeah. budget consideration. And then you're going to have rain big, towers. Budget and, consideration. This was a $17 million movie. They're, they could have fucking wi- faked a storm in this movie. This is very true. It comes into play in the second movie. There's a huge storm. I remember that. whole, like, Second right. half. Of that yeah, movie. isn't that yeah. why the spoilers for the second movie? It's storm isn't season. that why the clouds the, rolling like clockwork? The um, tanning bed fries her is because of the storm, right? Like it short circuits and fries her. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm misremembering then. Mm. I just remember the tanning mm. bed scene. No, she gets no, locked in. Yeah, there. she's locked, oh, locked in. She goes gotcha. in for a okay. tan. He walks in and just locks. Oh, that's her right. In yeah. yeah, because the motivation of our killer Ben Willis, played by Muse Watson, in who's dressed movies, like Ernest. In what way? He's got the denim shirt, denim pants, oh, and the yeah, hat. Right. Later on, he's yeah, dressed just like fucking Ernest. It kind of is. Den- <laughs> he, I think he is a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Uh, his whole motivation is not to write off 
kill them, but he wants to terrorize them. Yeah. He wants to fuck with them before yeah. he eventually will kill them. But his main motivation is to just fuck with them. Because yeah, he has opportunities to kill uh, them yes, he does, throughout the movie. So, very much so. Yeah, like, why doesn't he, he kill Barry. Ryan Phillippe when he gets a right. chance? I don't know. It just fades to black and then he's in the hospital. Yeah, he stands he over him menacing stupid. with the with the hook. Right. Like, runs this him is over, the which should have maybe should have killed him. Because that's he goes through a fucking lot of building. Well, that's yeah. what I thought he was trying to kill him by hitting him with it because well, it was like, right. this should have killed him. It, but then he lives. He should have. I don't know. And then it goes that extra mile. Like the dude gets out of the car and he comes up with a big fucking right. hook and then he wants to fade be menacing out. first until he gets to yeah. the anniversary <laughs> and then kill them. Because the anniversary is his night. That's when he's got all the shit rigged up. He's got the explosive, <laughs> the little timer on the power box. So he can hit it and psh, power it's go not mm-hmm. He thing. planned it. It's not a thing, Colin. There's no explosive. He he's was a simple for fisherman that night. with a hook. <laughs> And a jacket. <laughs> what else does he do? Why does not anybody know who Ben Willis is in this town? Yeah, it doesn't seem like a very big town. There's a lot of fishermen. They all, a lot they of fishermen. all hang out on their boats. They That's don't talk what to I'm people. saying. But they all should know, like, yeah, it's Ben Ben Willis over there. Yeah, you're looking for this guy. It's Ben Willis. You would think. I mean, he does end up in the paper and all that stuff. He's part of this town. Like, some people should know him, I guess. But maybe he's been, like, hiding out since... The year before. Yeah, but I mean, at what point are they like looking for him? Well, but I'm saying people can say, hey, that's Ben Williams. But right. Freddie like, Prince yeah. Jr. should know who he is. No, right? Or know no, something no, about him. No, no, Because no. he works on the fucking same docks. Yeah, but why? Right. Should- but but, but Freddie Prince Jr. didn't work on the docks. Not then. Right. Well, right. Over the course of the year. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> After they hit Ben Willis, then he started working on the docks. So he wouldn't know him. After that. Yeah. And I'm sure at this point, Ben Willis hasn't been, like, working a boat. Yeah, he has. Nah, not in, like, public. The, he's been planning his revenge. He's got a ton of ice down in cold storage down there where he yeah, didn't have fish, planning, though. You're right. Look at his, like, cabin at the end of the movie. He's been planning his revenge, doing his research, as he says in the movie. Sure. Mm-hmm. Setting up um, to, little bombs to to, on Shut the... up! He's not setting up little bombs, Colin. <laughs> the trip <laughs> wires. No. <laughs> but he's been doing his research, trying because I figure that he doesn't know who threw him in the water. So he's been doing his research to figure out who did it. And that's been his year. That's why he waited this long to like fucking torture them. It's mm. because he didn't know who did it. He had to find out. This is a realization I'm only coming to now. And no. tell me if it doesn't make sense. It, well, now I can't remember what it was, but there was is something, there something that it, well, while they were that? standing over him, they said, because I remember thinking of the, at the He's moment, now I don't remember what it is. Car, yeah, I know, but that's why I was remember. like, is he conscious at this point? Because they said something that he ends up using later on. I'm like, well, the only way that he would have known that is because he was awake when they were talking about you it. But now I can't that. remember what it, it was. key. Yeah, I know. Your argument at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And I can't remember it's, what it was. I remember having the thought, but not the moment of the movie. <laughs> So there right, it is. Now we'll have to go back and, no, and watch it I think it he's again. been doing his research over this year to find out who these people are and to, like, to start yeah. fucking with them. He sees their faces. Plus they've been gone for their... Yeah, he uh, sees their faces. He the sees year. that they're kids. You know, he's got little clues. Like, he see, he grabs the crown. He knows that she was some sort of queen. Yeah. So he's piecing this together over right. the year, figuring out who like, they are. Yeah, based on... Because the yeah. newspaper clippings about all this stuff. So I feel like he's been doing his mm-hmm. research through that year as well. I always wondered why he... Why didn't he just start doing this earlier? But he's been trying to figure out it. Figure out this whole thing. And he says, I need to get them all back together. And Jay Love's gone off to college, so I'm going to mail her a, a note a note that's going to bring her back. No, she gets the yeah. note when she comes back. When and honestly, I think he's leaving them for dead because they left him for dead. What do you mean? Like, the, the reason he's not killing them right away. I think he's just kind of, like, leaving them because they left him for dead. Mm. Sure. I think it's part of his tactic. Like, but, when he but hits then- Barry and stuff? You should be sure, oh. though. Like, I, I mean, know. I guess it, it makes sense that he would think that Ryan Phillippe would die from that. No, I, should, I don't no, think he would. No, I think he knows he's not dead. It, because they knew he wasn't dead. And they left him anyway. But uh, they were hoping he would die in the ocean. Right. Yeah. They were not expecting him to well, live. He's trying yeah. to punish them, right? I think, yeah. Because he's crazy. and yeah. you know, Right. So he's like, I'm going to punish them and kill them all. But... He kills uh, Ryan Philippe, and then he kills uh, Sarah Michelle Geller. Right. But when the he tires. gets, then he tricks. Uh, then you know his uh, his costume is off, mm-hmm. and basically he's just some dude who's like, you Ernest. know, yeah. Uh, what was it? Don't Do worry, child. This movie. <laughs> no, he's he's dressed just like fucking Ernest. He's it's got the, the same hat. He's got to, it's the Canadian. But then he has to explain <laughs> to her, like you know. 
It's like you kids in the whatever. He gets her alone on the boat, and I'm like, okay, but Drunk, why are you driving around, running focused over, on things like that? Her. Why is he? Why is he focused on her? Because she's the one who felt guilty, right? You could have stopped this. I mean, well, because, he's focused because he's on, well, gotten the other two already. Well, that, well, yes, that's exactly. But it. why didn't he? Why doesn't he slash her? Right? Why does he? Or why didn't he have a long conversation with them, explaining like this is why I'm going to kill you right now? Because you kids think, think he can get away with murder. I think it's of the moment, like because of where he has her and what he. I think he knows a lot more than. Uh, and this is me putting things into this movie, but I think he knows a lot more at this point. He knows that he's killed two people at this point. He's got her. I mean, every. Every villain's got a monologue, Colin. I was gonna say, I, yeah, think it, I think it's just the horror movie trope. But this seems or like a movie trope. No movie trope, yeah, yeah for he sure. Talk. Yeah, there's Jason. Shut up. Did Freddy Krueger have a monologue? No, it's just he a, monologues it, through like eight movies, Colin. Yeah, they're all quips. It's like, just a villain trope of like you yeah. explain yeah, your plan. Trope. It's more yeah, of a James actually, Bond there's thing. There's a commercial right. about it right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you seen that commercial? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. As so long like, as villains will explain their yeah. plan to you. The guy's yeah. still strapped to a chair, and the villain's like, "And I made a PowerPoint presentation, and, like explained this plan." <laughs> they oh, do. It's funny. I think this is his opportunity to do that because if you're. I think it's more satisfying for for the killer if your victim knows why you're doing this to them. Mm-hmm. And if they, you torture them throughout that process, I think it's more satisfying for them. And that's why he does this at this point, because he has the opportunity. He's, you know, he, he had the opportunity to kill them. He didn't have the opportunity to sit them down and explain to them why he was killing them. Mm-hmm. But he has that As long as I can explain to one of them. Right. He has that opportunity with Julie at this point, so he does it. Yeah, but thank God Julie's able to go through the TARDIS of the ship. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Anytime she inside. needs a door, there's a door. Yep. Yeah. There's a door anytime she needs it. Oh, I mean, this is apparent in all ships. I mean, yeah. like there's, yeah, I was a, there's say, a storage never... for, I, for shit you catch, you put on ice so it's fresh when you get back yeah. home. There's mm-hmm. one for the engine room. This is not out of the ordinary. I was going to say, I've never been on a large fishing boat, so I can't say. This might actually just be what I fishing think it boats is. are There's like. an engine room and a storage for fish. Yeah. That's yeah, all but we what see. about that hallway she was in between the two? Yeah. That's the that's the flooded the hallway. That's oh yeah, just, yeah. Uh, that's just the, yeah, but it's just gigantic. The, it's I will the say, well I will say, I'm guessing it. that on a boat where you could get trapped underwater, there's probably multiple exits. I would right? think so. Yeah. I would think so. Multiple ways to I get hope. out. I hope so. But it's just, <laughs> I it's think just so. a, like it's a very it's a narrow causeway between one area and the other. Yeah, I give it. I give it to him. Yeah. I, I know nothing about ships. I'm sure this is uh, accurate. What about <laughs> Freddie Prince Jr.'s athletic abilities in this? That I, ha- I that I cannot talk that to. It is insane. Yeah. And then Spider Man's his way and onto the ship. A specimen of, twice. Uh, he, ability. Yep. Twice he does I'm that. I'm just saying he's on a fishing boat. He's using his muscles. He's climbing. He's like, pumped full of ladders. adrenaline. The, okay, just, but when he like shimmies up man. that rope oh, yeah. all the way up. I can do that's, that. Yeah. That's ridiculous upper body strength there. <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, and when he jumps from the little boat onto the other one and pulls himself up. People can lift cars and they yeah. have like when that they shot have of, to. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what's happening so when, uh, when your love of your life yeah. is being threatened yeah. by a killer yes. with a hook, uh-huh. you will and, climb some shit to help her. And them, um, you know, strong fisherman yeah, muscle, muscles, you know. Muscles. Muscles. It is a series of James Bond moves that make no sense. It's very lucky that he gets knocked off a boat. Twice. grabs the... The netting and yeah. climbs up. Mm-hmm. Yep. And well, the, even uh, when he first gets on it, even he pulls that little small boat upside and jumps, jumps from his boat true. to the other one and grabs with like the his fingertips and pulls himself up. Luckily, Fisherman's insane. Yeah. Fisherman's <laughs> insane. Fisherman strength. Uh-huh. Yep. Aquaman knows all about this. Yep. yep. But thank God our heroes here. Uh, yeah, our heroes are reunited. The lovebirds, and they are able to separate the fisherman from his hook hand. Yes, mm. his mm-hmm. one tool to yep. kill them all. Because that's what you do. You separate. That's his power, right? Yeah. The, you right. take the, the weapon away, and then he's gone. And then flash forward to a year later, and it's a sequel. Well, <laughs> <What>? I mean, <laughs> kind of. Sort of. I was like, are we just going straight into, I still know what you did last summer? What's going on? She's it's, at school. Well, it's a nice, like, well, it does end, because, you know, like, he ends up in the river, and, you know, the... The body will show up. They usually do. Mm-hmm. That fake hand with the hook on the net looked fucking terrible. That that's no Tom horrible. Savini uh, hand. Let's no, oh. that was like a spirit Have Halloween you ever seen prop. A fake, uh, real hand that's been disconnected from its the rest of its body, connected to a hook. I'm pretty sure it's not as rough. It looks fake. No, you haven't, so you don't know. It looked bad. <laughs> it's like a spirit Halloween yeah. prop. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, but so she gets the I still know message like uh, I you like know, this artfully ending. written in too. steam. Personally, I like on this, the shower uh, little, door. Uh, this I little, like, little, like little stinger at the end of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like you get the the him hitting the thing. And and the ding. Ding. They're sound. still dating a year later. Apparently, yeah, sure. he's on the phone with them. Sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. which doesn't hold up to the sequel, but mm-hmm. sure, that still happens. And then you know, written in the steamy shower scene because you got to have your main heroine uh, in, in a, a towel. towel. At Naturally, the this, they knew what they were doing. It's I was good. surprised, like in this movie, Ryan Philippi has the shower scene. I'm like, oh, in the 80s, this used to be like the girls would be in the shower. Sure, and, and then they got, yeah, yeah, things were missing and they got chased around all that stuff. It's very true. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we do get a shower scene with, uh, we do, kind of, yeah. with and Jennifer then, J. Love. Good, it's it's good enough. Yeah. I was going to say, the client list exists if that's really what you're looking for. Like, <laughs> there's never, you know. There's nothing satisfying with that. Uh, I'm not going to go that I'm far. Sorry. Yeah. We, <laughs> we do, this just, yeah. So, she's, she's still on the list, though. But the uh, the killer breaks through the glass. Very Which, dramatic. I, yeah, I love, I love that. Scares ending. the shit out I of everybody. Yeah. Singer. I, I think too. it's great. It's a good ending. I love mm-hmm. it because like it. it doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be a sequel, but it's it's fun because yeah. um, if you look at the ending of the uh, next movie, and the actual I Still Know What You Did Last Summer, um, that kind of happens again, but that doesn't yeah. mean there's going to be a sequel for me. You yeah, it's if, solid because you know if she dies right then or if there's right, going to be a sequel. If it, right, yeah. you don't know if it's like real. It. You don't know if it's just something they're doing for it. It's. I think it's fun that they do that at the end. Plus, because he loses his hand with the hook, like you can imagine, and we do end up getting it, like we get the urban legend, like the dude with the hook. For mm-hmm. the yep. And we get that in the second one. Yeah. Which Maybe I should nice. go back and watch the second one. You should Although watch the second one. I remember not really one. liking it, though. It's is it more of a slasher movie? Yes, I still yeah, remember yeah. more people dying in the yes, second one. Yeah. It is much more of a slasher movie. It is more ridiculous, but I think it's also more fun. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a lot more like we're getting down to shit. Yeah, it's definitely a more there's more fun to that movie, and there's a lot more. It's it's far more ridiculous, but I enjoy it. Again, mm-hmm. I watched it like probably a month ago, and I'm just like still good. Well, we're probably we're gonna have to find out if Sean likes this movie, uh, right? Uh, I'm still shocked you didn't pick the sequel tonight. I thought about it. <laughs> we yeah. didn't, just didn't jump just, right into the you're number Sean, two. You pick sequels. I, yeah. thought about, I thought about reviving the uh, summer of sequels. Yeah. for this because I do like that. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, so you're, we're going to go around the room and you're going to find out what we all thought of. I know what you did last summer. That sounded very robotic and weird. Because uh, you were trying to not say, I still know what you did last summer. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, first, so we want you to stay tuned for oh, that because it's going to be like, you know, the, the, the main event. But first, we want to answer some of your mail. And so to do that, we need to summon Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. And Igor sends a huge congratulations to Michaela, who just got engaged last weekend. Yay! Yay. (laughs) Thanks, Igor. Appreciate it. She's going to get married next week on Friday the 13th. Yeah, Friday the 13th. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Or yesterday. Yeah, as, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> Igor's got his raincoat on. It's extra slimy. Today. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh slimy. I know. I mean, he put a raincoat on, and now that's slimy, too. Like, it's oh. a slimy it sandwich yeah, going on over it, there. It doesn't work. <laughs> so, uh, in case you want to join the fun in the mailbag and have Igor hand deliver your letters to us, you can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. So tonight, about I Know What You Did Last Summer, mm-hmm. Sean Roger writes in, because we said, hey, do you think that I Know What You Did Last Summer holds up? Do Sean you? says, I don't think it held up in 1997. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, we'll get to it, but that's... Uh, well, Chris Huddleston says, uh, Chuds. 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 he says, any <laughs> slasher wave is a good wave in my book. I saw this one in the theater and I really enjoyed it, even if it pales in comparison to Scream. Some of the others, like Urban Legend, are fun, too. We can't yeah. compare everything to Scream. I, yeah, 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 I mean, I, it's I, a losing I, battle at that point. I yeah. agree with him, though, that like slasher means I'll watch it. You know, well, like, that's I mean, very you true. know, I, yeah. I, it's like, ooh, slasher movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, drinking beer, watching movies, right? Soon it says, <laughs> hey, yes, we that's are. what we do. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Well, it says, uh, Ryan Philippe, 
Philippe. 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 Philippe is possibly one of the most unlikable characters in any horror movie. Oh, he's saying this character is one of the most unlikable in any horror movie. He couldn't die soon enough. Being 31 years old now and rewatching it, I know what you did last summer is very contrived and asked the viewer to disregard any logic. I would say it does not hold up very well. It's painful to watch, except Jennifer loves cleavage. Ha ha. I love the podcast. <laughs> Look forward to it every week. Your chemistry together is great. Aw, thanks. thanks, man. That's awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. I, I will say there are a lot of logical plot holes in this movie. Sure. Like, like oh, we didn't sure. even talk about the body in the trunk with the crabs. Yeah. That is the I biggest I think that was Johnny Galecki. <laughs> no, it was it was Johnny Galecki, but she runs away. This is in this is a scene in that is in But broad the logistics daylight. of how that happens oh, yeah. make logistics no sense. Of it make no yeah. sense. Like yeah. did he go back and get the body yeah. and take it out of there so with all the So he has keys to her car? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's possibly switched out it's, the cars. He switched out the entire truck. Shut up, Colin. <laughs> he would have to take the keys was, from he's her. He's been planning for this for a year. He would have to take the keys from her. She's got the keys. <laughs> is he a crab wrangler? No he just like That is a lot of crabs to round up. That's a lot of work. And I'm sure there's crab shit in there too but he got yeah. all that out too it's there's no so evidence clean. anything it's so clean there's and he does it in five minutes yeah, yeah. Is there's there a lot like, of minutes is there like a tarp like tucked in that he just like all of a sudden it's it's like oops it. one scoop that's a better yeah. explanation there it is yes figured it like out that. done and he's, he's but very, still he's, he's a fisherman <laughs> okay he fisherman strength he fisherman strength i like this i'm but, okay with but it now. still okay he's scooping with all of it he's scooping up his tarp right with the hook yeah he just it's got it's got eyelets on it not with the hook he's still got two hands right now he has a hand but you're telling me not one crab falls out of that nope he grabs them all as they're falling out yeah. of this tarp. Yeah, one, well, they're now the, one yeah, of them falls the out. That's fine. Okay, all right. I mean, apparently all he right. planted little bombs in the electrical work. <laughs> okay, yeah. it's, 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 he's, he's been no, planning this It's a for fucking years. tarp surrounded by a, a fishing net. The net catches all the crabs. Let's move on. All right, Nick <laughs> Siebel writes in. And says, I was 12 when this movie came out. God damn, Jay Love and her amazing basketballs. They stole the show. Laugh out loud. There's I mean, emojis. she looks great in this movie. Ooh. She does look good. Tony Genoway says, uh, of course, this was before the client list and her wearing mostly lingerie for an hour every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Hey, yes, it was. That's a fact. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Yep. That's yeah. true. About our episode. That was it. Uh, that was <laughs> it. That's it for I Know All What right. You Did Last Summer. Yeah. Uh, about our episode, Alligator, Ben Harris writes uh, in and says, this is the first horror movie I was allowed to see while this in Jaws remains a favorite. Some of the best characters I have it in my collection. I watch it regularly. Not too sure about the sequel, though. Thumbs down. Surely this is due a remake. Well, did now we you summon Sean to pick two? the mm. sequel because. So Alligator 2? The Mutation. Oh, right. We did talk about it. Great. Now Sean's going to pick it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> mm, summer of sequels. Mm -hmm. yeah. Summer's half Summer's over. Summer's almost over, it's gonna dude. Be half summer. over. Okay. It's going to be the summer of shitty sequels. And we'll just... <laughs> Summer's over. <laughs> Thank God. We're halfway yeah. through. The winter of sequels. Oh, no. Oh, there is the winter of sequels. our discontent. The winter's hard enough on us already, Sean, you know? <laughs> winter's coming. Uh, <laughs> yeah, winter's coming. <laughs> About our episode on Double Impact, TGS12371. name. Writes in and says, Corey Everson was the original fit girl. Corey Everson was the uh, buff the, henchman. The oh, right, freakish, right, right. like, rapist woman. Yeah, yeah she, the molester. She, she was, was a she was several molesting. time Miss Olympia. That's she great. also played She-Hulk. She she Did played, she? She played She-Hulk. In what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we talked about her enough on that actual episode because we didn't know who the hell she was. Yeah. Uh, welcome back, shocking, shocking dark Holly. <laughs> your, your lack of Oh hey, sorry. <laughs> it's like I don't know. I, I, just, I just did not like her. I didn't like her. No, she's and not, I have. She's not good. She's not integral to that movie. No, and she does bad things. She's bad, and I'm still bitter and about she gets double to impact, fight. So. Uh, you know, Van Damme though. She should fight the woman. Yeah. We talked about this. Yeah, we I'm, go I'm, listen to yeah, that. Well, movies don't like to have women fight each other on the screen. Well, I, I guess I should. People I guess I should say no. It's more. It's actually usually that they. It's the opposite, actually, because like the, uh, what was the Batman Forever with Uma Thurman, right? Uh, that, meant, uh, that, that was Batman, Batman and Robin. Robin. Okay. Robin. Okay. Okay. Alicia Silverstone. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. What? Where are we going? Okay. The whole reason Alicia Silverstone is in that movie is because they felt uncomfortable having like Batman beat the shit out of like a female villain, so they created a. So they were finally. That's right. Usually it yeah, is. Yeah, usually, usually the girl yeah. beat the shit out of her. The, uh, I mean, Alicia Silverstone. The big fight scene. Fight. Yeah, they have a fight, yeah, a fight yeah. scene. Yeah. Well, they usually yeah, seem to match up. Everybody somehow yeah. in the end right. of these movies squares off against their opposite number. Exactly. Right. Wolverine yeah. goes up against the person who's got the claws. Yeah. Exactly. You know. The, yeah. 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 So. That makes sense. Yeah. 
I, I can understand They're that evenly logic. matched. Yeah, yeah. Which one's going to I mean... Work? Like, why they, don't you mix it up and, like, the people who aren't they, evenly matched attack exactly, those people, yeah. and then you'd win. Yeah, it kind of wasn't like that in uh, Batman Returns with Catwoman. Oh, Whatever. Shit. But it doesn't Max matter enough about that movies. And, yeah, doesn't and, matter. And Max Shrek was, like, shooting her and shit. So yeah. there's a whole thing. Well, and Catwoman's always kind of walked that line of, like, anti-hero villain in movies. So it's yeah. always kind of like, where is she going to land, you know? Yeah. yeah. And her direct She becomes the partner is, of Batman. I know, but they do fight. In the, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. We're not talking about that movie. So. <laughs> We're talking about Batman <laughs> Returns, okay? Sorry, sorry, guys. I didn't mean to Maybe derail us. I love that movie. I'm not going to lie. I do. Oh. I don't care. I'm saying it. There it is. I don't care. All right. Wrap ups. So wrap ups. <laughs> Colin. Oh, shit. Going right for it. On the hot seat. What did you think? What did we watch? I know what you did last summer. It's your you movie. Brought it. yeah. It's your movie. I never. You should know. Good guy. What did you think of this movie? Um. Well, <clears throat> watching it again tonight, this is the first. So I've seen this movie three times. Once wow. in the theater on its original release. Once on video, probably shortly thereafter. And now tonight, revisiting. <sighs> That's it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because um, I think, you know, Scream was a shot in the arm revitalization for uh, the slasher film. I mean, the slasher movie was dead in the 90s. The 90s sucked for horror movies. I mean, like the the biggest things in my mind that came out between like the end of the slasher boom in the late 80s and Scream was like Candyman. (laughs) I'm, gonna, I'm so still going to say Candyman, Candyman the, yeah. and uh, like Jacob's Ladder, which was like, you know, opening the horror genre up into this like psychological thriller thing. And then Scream comes along and it like reinvents or, you know, it reinvented slasher movies by, you know, uh, becoming this kind of um, deconstruction of them. We're, if nothing else, acknowledging them. <clears throat> yeah. But I mean, even the tropes of like, you know, it's like we're living in a slasher movie. It yeah. was brilliant. Yeah. Uh, so then you have all these movies that are trying to capitalize on the success of Scream, and I think they all kind of suck. The reason I think they suck is because uh, they forget why slasher movies worked in the first place. It's like slasher movies, it's not about the plot, because if you take the gore, the sex and violence out of their exploitation films, right? Yeah. That's why you were watching these movies, because they were, you know, at some point you're going to get, you're going to see something that's like, Jesus you Christ. A lot of blood and a unique kill, and you're going to see boobs. Yeah. Or you're going to see something else. But in the 90s, it's like slasher films light, right? It's like, what if we took all those elements out of it, because those are now in the 90s passe, right? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, we want to basically make PG-rated slasher movies, because they'll say fuck a couple of times, so it can get an R rating. But we're going to take all that stuff out of it. So it's like, without those ingredients, do they work? Scream works because it's about what a slasher movie is and exploring the tropes. I know what you did last summer doesn't work because it is a slasher movie without any of the juice, you know? Mm. There's no pizzazz in it. The thing that it has going to it, I think, is we were sitting here talking tonight. It's like, uh, you know, it's the star factor. And when all these people who are in it, uh, you know, all of us sitting in the, in this room and you listening, you know, it's like we remember all these people because we saw this movie because it was a cultural thing following Scream. Everybody went to see the next Scream was this made these people superstars for a brief period of time anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, once you take that out of it, it's like, yeah, I mean, the slasher villain is disappointing when he's unmasked at the end. I'm like, why well, we got... Who is he, and how is he connected to this? And he's just some dude. What? Like you couldn't scar him up somehow, or give him a facial thing, or whatever. He they, talks too I much. Think they or tried. Like, I don't think it's prominent though. Like, is there? I think there's a scar on his head, and maybe a few on his face. But I don't think they. Well, really, if he scarred like, him, it'd to. be like a rip off of Freddy Krueger because he talks a lot. Like you know, yeah. at the end. So it was just kind of like I don't know. I was uh, let down by the end of it. It you know, in the reveal of the final villain. I don't think any of the suspense scene works. Like every suspense scene in Scream 2 blows this one. I mean, like, this has no business existing in a world where Scream 2 exists. You know, if you're going to do it, you got to at least try to do better than Scream, you know? Um, so, I mean, I guess it says you know, the testament to the abilities of Wes Craven. Um, I mean, I think the, the leads are appealing people because I've seen them in other things, but their characters in this suck. Uh, the writing is like. I mean, at the end, when they're like, what was those parting lines between Freddie Prince Jr. and... I know your pain. 
<laughs> oh yeah, it was, it was the only one who gets me. Yeah, I know yeah. your pain. Oh god, I know your pain. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that was bad. Horrible. You're supposed to think it's like a thing between them, and it's cute, but you're just like, <laughs> yeah. No. Well, we also have no reason to think that. That's right. like yeah. extrapolation. Uh, no? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't feel like any of their connections in this, which is weird. The right. one that they're yeah, the trying to go yeah, for. because there's no chemistry. Because they paired up the wrong people. Junior. That's why. Yeah, yeah because maybe. Because in real life, Freddie Prince Jr. and Sarah Michelle Geller are banging and about to start dating. So that's who it should have been. You know, they yeah, matched yeah, up the couples right. wrong. The chemistry doesn't yeah. work yeah. between the yeah. characters. Yeah. No. Yeah. I would agree. So I wouldn't recommend uh, that you it's watch this movie. It's two blonde people versus two brunette people. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> in movies. You gotta mix it up. You gotta mix it you up. You gotta mix it up. Yeah. Rule number one. I would pass on. I know what you did last summer. I think as time goes on and the generation who you know saw it and it was a formative thing. As we move, you know, ten years from now, uh, it's not going to stand up. I don't think. Is don't uh, talk about me like that. <laughs> well, this is all of us, right? We were all like, this was a movie that I mean, you know, I was there opening night. <laughs> uh, but I think eventually you'll remember Scream, and this will be you'll remember if you remember this is because it's like one of those movies that came out around Scream. Mm-hmm. But I don't. It doesn't distinguish itself aside from the people who are in it because you know them from other things. So yeah, Holly, what do you think? Um, yeah, no, I I th- I think you're I think you're making some really good points. I think. You hit a lot of it on the head. Um, I, I there's so many scenes in this that it's just you can you can see in your mind what should have happened, like the like the scene with the sister. She's she got gutted with the hook, and he's actually dragging her. And I'm like, that scene could have been so much better if there had been some gut spilling out as she's being dragged. Like they could just could have been so much more impactful. Or even if Sarah Michelle mm-hmm. Geller had witnessed it. Yes. Had been like Something. if there had been like a scene of uh, of that where she's trying to hide from the killer and she witnesses her sister being dragged across. Yes, that more could horrifying. Have better, yes, there needs to be just it needs to be more horrifying. And I think anytime there's a movie where you're actually picking it apart, saying this is what could have made it better, it's not going to be a great movie. Um, but there are aspects of this I really did enjoy. Like we said, I really did like that ending and the, and the shower with coming out, uh, coming through the glass. I thought that was really great. And I remember seeing this in the theater. Granted, I was like 13 at the time. Sure. But there were like jump scares in this that actually got me, which, I mean, that's saying something. I mean, if Anne Heche is knocking at your window, that's yeah. going to scare the shit out of me. That that part made me jump when I first <laughs> saw this. Um, so there are little moments that, that work in this movie. Um, I, I agree that it, it's it's not... It's not his best writing. It's not his greatest episode of Dawson's Creek. Let's say, no, let's no, say that for the damn Halloween sure. episodes are let's, better. Let's than... say that for damn sure. The Halloween episodes of yeah, Dawson yeah. are great. Yeah, they're better than that. <laughs> um, there, yeah, there's a lot of it that I just felt like it was. I felt like he he did scream, and then this was just kind of like all the bits he didn't add in scream, and mm-hmm. it just it just doesn't it doesn't have that that appeal that you're looking for. It's very much a product of its time. It's very much a cultural movie um, that I think you're right. I think it is going to be forgotten. If if it's not forgotten, it's because people are just going to remember Scream. I know you did last summer as like a twosome that came out together. Mm-hmm. That's I, I don't think anyone is necessarily going back and rewatching it. They're just remembering the title, the poster, Jennifer Love Hewitt. Um, so that, that really doesn't hold up to be a great movie. However, I have so much nostalgia for this that I can't hate it. I still enjoy watching it. Maybe it's bringing back memories. I don't know. I think this is a movie that relies heavily on nostalgia. I think so. And I think it lives in that in that area. I think so very much because and even now so much so that I don't think it can be killed by the 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 critique yeah. of it. That nostalgia will elevate it above. Because right that. now, picking it apart, saying, yeah, it kind of sucks, and the writing sucks, and all this, I'm <laughs> still like... Going, like, well, yeah, obviously, but... But you know what? I'm going to fucking recommend it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? Is. Yeah. Yep, I still that's love it. a fucking twist ending right <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. There's your twist. Just yeah. like the movie. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. five minutes of great storytelling and twist ending right there. Yeah. yeah. Michaela. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I like it. Uh, Sean, we neglected to mention that you pointed out there was sexy netting in this movie as There's well. sexy yes. netting. Hashtag sexy netting. Yeah. Sam Michelle <laughs> Geller has a four post bed with, with sexy. Sexy netting. Netting. Yes. yes. No. It's a thing. Put that on it's my a fucking thing. 
Gravestone. <laughs> sexy netting. Sexy netting. Sean, sexy netting, Tyler. Or just like, <laughs> Should we make it your nickname? Just, no, no. I just want you to chisel in actual sexy like a, netting oh over the God. dates of when I lived and died. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's what I want. Put the can dates somebody, on can somebody send that in? Somebody Photoshop oh that for us yeah. and send it oh, in, please. please. Oh, my God. And you can, yeah, I died now, but as long as I have sexy netting over See, I'll put, I'll do it, but I'll put it to question mark and then put it on like a four poster right. bed and then roll netting over it. That'd Please be great. do so. <laughs> so one of my biggest gripes with this franchise is the naming convention of the movies and the sequels. Because, okay, so you've got I Know What You Did Last Summer, which is a long, unwieldy title. Yeah. Um, then you've but got- It uh, peaks your interest, does it not? Yeah, no, I mean, it's effective, but it it would never happen again. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> might not, yeah. Um, because it becomes it's unwieldy. After yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll always know what you did last summer, and oh. and uh, I still know what you did. These all reference back to the same mm-hmm. inciting yeah, incident. Yeah. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah. So you're doing three movies about the same incident in the so first. Movie? I know what you did last summer I, too. T O O. No, or yeah, or I was saying you you just you carry it out through the school year in a way. I know what you did last spring break. I know what you did last winter break. You, because you do you do I know winter what you did last Friday. Yeah, yeah. You, well, you do winter. That's a Friday movie. Though. Yes, yes, that's yeah. exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Ice Cube is in that movie. Ice Cube is in that guys. movie. <laughs> Terry Crews. And Terry obviously, Cruz. obviously yeah. Terry Crews. Let's get Terry Crews. But if you movie. do like winter break, then you can do like a ski lodge murder movie. You know, you can change that up. To this make it, uh, you game. know, yeah, I was just saying, yeah, the video game, game. yeah, this yeah. Is video game. This is yeah, the the, uh, the fucking titles are. I don't understand why you do three movies about the same incident That's in the first why movie. I love them. It's uh, <laughs> that being said, I realize a lot of my memories of this franchise are of the second movie, uh, not the first yes. one. Um, yeah. However, the leads, it doesn't get any better of a time capsule than Lee yeah, in this movie. Yeah, for sure. I really had to rack it my really, brain yeah. to remember when America loved Ryan Phillippe. Like, it's been a long time. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, maybe I'm alone in this, but I get a really uncomfortable vibe from Ryan Phillippe. Mm-hmm. He makes me very uncomfortable to watch. And It I, does feel like he's done something bad in it, real life. And yes! We don't, <laughs> and yes, my God, yes! We yes, were talking, we were about talking this. off mic, and I said to Holly, I said, you know if he was acting right now, we'd be hearing really bad news about him, right? right. It feels yeah. like he, he assaulted someone He did someone something, yes! Life. Okay, yes. I feel. It's I feel because like of the it's the he wears the outfit of the right. assault, uh, the feels, assaulter. Yeah, but there's the just white like, beater. But it's, it's that taken with like the divorce from Reese Witherspoon. Yeah. Just like, but yeah, like, 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 but like Mika- Michaela pointed out, Reese Witherspoon has said she was once in an abusive relationship, but she didn't say who it was. She didn't say who. In my mind, was immediately like Ryan, Ryan Phillippe. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, and, and, and like, there's just something about him, and it could be just that he gets put in this role a lot. But like, I get a very like Marky Mark from Fear vibe from him all yes. the time, and it makes very uncomfortable and like I mean maybe that's how good of an actor he is is that he constantly makes me that uncomfortable have you seen Gosford Park yeah I have okay. yeah. Yeah. That's like, I have I'm like that. what's have I yeah. seen him in where he's not that type of yeah character. that's the only thing I can think of yeah, yeah well he's, he's a dad now and wish upon the fucking yeah. horrible shitty mm-hmm. horror movie oh yeah, it's yeah. Bad. yeah you saw yeah. it yeah you saw it I'm a glutton for punishment yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, that being said, uh, I agree with Holly. This movie's got a lot of problems. We pointed them all out, but it is a time capsule. Oh, come and on. Yes. <laughs> it's, um, I love the actors in this movie. I think Sarah Michelle Gellar is an excellent scream queen, and I think that she should have been the lead in this movie. Kind of flipped her with Jennifer Love Hewitt. I think I would have preferred that. Um, so I would recommend it just based on the time capsule and the nostalgia blanket that it is. Yes. So I would recommend it. Yes. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> That may be the only reason I recommend this movie. Like, it is, it, because I was thinking watching this, I'm like, this movie is just, it's all nostalgia. Like, in watching this movie tonight, I remember where I was, I remember how old I was, mm-hmm. I remember what the thoughts I was having watching this movie. Like, it is, it, uh, it it's is. It's a warm, fuzzy blanket. It, it is. is. But would you recommend it to an 18 year old? Yes. Really? Yeah. yeah. You know what? I'm. I'm we want. Okay. I watch '80s movies and I love them, even though I don't have the nostalgia blanket for those. I didn't live. Michaela that. loves Saturday they get Night Fever. Awesome yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, this type of movie. I mean, yeah. this is. Uh, I mean, this movie. It's like, is, what does this have in it for well, an 18-year-old well, 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 now? This is. They don't know who these people well, are. Who are? You know what? There are. Sm- I'm not going to say smarter, but there are. You don't have to be smarter to enjoy this over. Like you're, you're basing this on like the uh, like how movies are made today for eighteen year olds. It's like you know, it's the it's the fast editing. It's the constant like 
Um, you're, uh, uh, what, uh, if you liked Happy Death Day, you'll love I Know What You Did Last Night. I don't summer. know. Why did I fall Happy in love? Happy Death Day has more to do with this movie than I think a lot of movies of the past 10 years yeah. before it, I think. Why did it I fall like in it? love with the that. Marx Brothers when I was 20 years old? I just did. Mm -hmm. I love it. it, just Is it am I nostalgic for yeah. it? No. No. It's really fucking old. Mm -hmm. But that means it. that just you're saying. saying that this is a good movie, which you spent five minutes saying. I'm just it's your wrap up. Go ahead. I'm just curious how this works. I don't think any of us said it was a good movie. I just said <laughs> I think but we you enjoyed you're it. But you recommend it yeah. right. for the nostalgic time so capsule. So if you're it is. 30, you should watch this movie. Except I, you've already seen it. No, because it's a time capsule. So like, even if you didn't live through it, it's a way you can visit that time. Yeah, exactly. There may be a lot of caveats to this movie, but I think that. Um, uh, maybe it is a movie that lives in nostalgia. And uh, watching it tonight, maybe it is a movie that only lives to provide you a backstory to watching I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. <laughs> <laughs> because I watched that a month ago, and I'm going to tell you that may be where we live. Mm -hmm. Because that movie... I think it's 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 more it's faster it's it's uh, it's, it's a little edgier. more insane yeah it's a little more ridiculous and I think that's our that's our home base uh, I think there's enough nostalgia for the first movie because because we get um, and it may be only because we get actors who are still working today who are, have survived this movie and gone forward and done stuff but I think they've done I think they did enough in this movie I like I like these characters. I like how they're portrayed. Like it's, I don't know. I I'm, I like this movie. It may be all based on nostalgia. I'm fine with that. But I still think there's enough there, especially in the last like 20 minutes. Because you do, I, I will say that there are problems with this movie. You do have to wait to the last 20 minutes to like. That's get every going. slasher movie. Right. Well, yeah. Every slasher movie is its last Yeah, right. Minutes, yeah. Right? To like get going and to like to mm -hmm. speed it up a little bit. But I think the uh the mystery elements and the drama elements of this movie are more prominent in the early going of this movie. Um it's still a horror movie all around. Um and you know, I like what they do. Plus, like I said, I think this is a very solid um uh B level like horror icon movie because Guy in a slicker with a hook, like that works for me. And it worked enough for people to see it where it got a sequel. And I think it became a thing. And I think there are, are uh I think there are enough people out there who will recognize this as, yeah, doing a slicker with a hook, like that's the thing. I know what you did last summer, I still know what you did last summer. That's a big thing for them. Because it's a big thing for me. So um yeah, I recommend it. I think there's still enough there. There, you know, it's it's still entertaining to me. Like I had a good time watching this. Even you know, I'm sitting here making fun of like, how did he turn all the lights off before he got under plastic and attacked Sarah Michelle Geller? But I think that's the fun of this movie for the people who saw it mm -hmm. at the age I did back then. Mm -hmm. So I still recommend it because I think you can still have fun with this. And I think, yep, I'm gonna recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Colin. Well, all right, there it I is. I recommend it. I think you can still get fun out of this movie. I like it. I'm still gonna watch it. I'll watch it again. He's Fuck gonna you. watch it tomorrow. <laughs> He's gonna have a, a triple feature. All right, so that's I know what you did last summer. Yes. So next week we're gonna be watching a movie that's chosen by Holly. Holly, what are we watching next week? We're gonna watch. I still know what you did. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, we should. I'm just kidding. Um, She's gonna hook her hand, Holly. I know. <laughs> We're we're gonna we're gonna take a different route. We're gonna watch the last exorcism. Ooh! Oh shit! All yeah. right, all right. Well, there it's we go. Be found a good one. First found footage movie. Yeah, yeah. is I it? I think so. Have we done okay. found footage on this? I don't think so. Come I know. on, I we don't have think to. So. Have. Found footage exorcism is gonna be fun. It's, Ooh! It's and also, a good I've one. never seen this movie. Yeah, you're the only okay. one, right? We've all. I seen think it. so because I, I, I skipped this one, so I don't. All right. Like all right. What's going on? All, all right. right. That's yeah. next week, the last exorcism on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.